so hello and welcome to this video in this video i want to show you how you go about uh, preparing the test using a smart document this test is is meant uh, to be used in two situations uh, rather the assignment is meant to be used in two situations let's assume that uh, you are teaching your students from a remote point. In other words, you are at home and your learner is also at home. So that is remote learning. And uh, there is a situation where you want to give your learner some materials for revision. One of these is to give them questions and where they can also be able to check answers by themselves. But the questions and the answers have been designed by you. So I'm going to use a smart document to do this. Uh, with me over here, I've got my four textbook, which I would call the smart uh, textbooks uh, because all of them are in one document. This document has uh, 1,204 pages. So I find it necessary to have a navigation for it. And you can see there is a navigation on the left-hand side for physics book one physics book two book three and finally book four i have all of them in the same document so i want to prepare some materials for student uh, in uh, form one and um, i want to prepare it from a topic such as uh, pressure for example you can see how easy it is to navigate using this particular a document that I'm using. Let me increase that because I need you to be able to see the questions. At uh, the moment I'm on pressure now, I can be able now to scroll through the pages because these pages now are not many. The importance of working with the documents which have got navigation is this. It helps you to go to the topic of your choice very fast. It also helps you to go to the concept that you want to talk about. You can imagine trying to scroll through a document with a thousand pages and it doesn't have an index. That one will be very difficult. So I've arranged my textbooks in such a way that they are able to give me that. And that is what I'd like you to, to also do in your subject or get a document. When you uh, get a document for your course books, make sure that they have a neat navigation. All right. Uh, I, I can be able to put away that navigation just by clicking this arrow here and it hides them. Now it brings the page that I'm interested to the center here and now I can be able to scroll through. Okay. I'm interested in certain questions for my students who are in form one. So I needed to get uh, my smart document template. So I go to the file where I keep them. Apparently, I had already opened one, which is this one, the smart document template. Let me put it here so that we can be able to view everything. I have prepared this smart document uh, in such a way that it also has a navigation. Uh, it is a document which requires you to type 10 questions for your students and to type 10 answers. That is the only thing you have to do. 10 questions, 10 answers. The, quest the template that I'm giving you for free has those and it cannot be altered. It must be 10 questions, 10 answers. Now, let's see what it has. On the very first page, you are you are asked to choose the item that the item is the subject if you click on this arrow over here it will give you a drop down of all the subjects you we have so you're able to choose your subject from this list if by chance you download this document because i'm going to give it to you if you download this document and you find that it does not have your subject just let me know so that I can send you one which has got the correct information. Like you can see already, the spelling here for French is wrong. 
I'm going to correct that so that uh, it can be, it can look right. Let us say maybe you receive this document and you find that it is a document with some spelling mistake somewhere. Just let me know so that I can update that and uh, remove that old document and put the one with the corrections. So I'm going to choose my subject over here, which is physics. And as soon as I do that, it comes to that particular position. I can be able to edit that a little bit. I can move it to the right. Uh, I mean to the left. I can move it all the way to the right. Center it in the middle. Increase the font because it is the it is the the major subject that I'm dealing with or decrease the font. But I would leave it with a font of about 36. That one is enough. The only thing you cannot be able to do is to delete that content control at that particular position. You cannot delete it because that is the way it has been designed. It is the way I have designed it rather. Then when you come over here, there is uh, this uh, link here which gives you uh, access to more templates. This one here. If you follow that link just by clicking control, then you left click the mouse, control. You can see it changes the sign. It becomes now a hand, control, click, and you find that it's going to open the link using, uh, let me minimize it. Uh, that is just the signature tune for the channel ICT for teachers. So don't worry about that. Over here, when you get to this channel, there are so many things you can be able to do. There are so many uh, lectures which train uh, teachers on how to design digital content because I've dedicated this channel ICT for teachers in order to help teachers to design a digital content and to communicate that with the students at a remote point or to use it in their everyday life situation because you realize that when it comes to adapting ICT to teach it has not been easy for most teachers so that is why I've dedicated this uh, channel to try and assist teachers to design digital content so it may be something that you might want to even share with your friends so that you spread that message the more the more of us if more of us were to embrace ICT in our work you find that even your work will become easier because when you go to your friends you find that your friends are speaking positively about using ICT to teach but if your friends are negative are already negative about using ICT to teach and you are into it you find that there might be a bit of conflict you might not want to do that in their presence or something like that. That is why sharing this is important because it might help encourage them. Okay, let me put this one away. I was just explaining how that link works. You want more training in terms of videos and everything? That is where you click and that is where you go. Uh, next, there is over here, you're going to enter text. The text you enter here is the topic that you're handling the topic that you're handling. Uh, I'm handling pressure. Let me see whether there is an alternative uh, uh, method of doing this. I will go back to my document that I'm dealing with. Let me just cascade it like that so that I can look at it. Let me look for the word pressure because I might not be interested in typing that information. So I will look for the word pressure and apparently that page appears not to give me exactly what I want. It appears to have been scanned differently. So I have the word pressure here. I'm going to select it and then copy. Copy is control C. So I've copied that in my clipboard. 
when I come here, I can be able to paste that. Like that. And you see, if for example, I've got a problem with typing, I can just copy and paste what I need. And then from there, I can go ahead and try to uh, edit that. Again, you cannot be able to delete it, but I have allowed you to edit the same. You can increase the font, you can decrease the font, you can change the color, you can make it bold, you can make it um, in italics, and so forth. Those are the things that I have allowed you to do. But leaving it in that font may just be enough. When it comes to instructions too, I have allowed you to change these instructions, but you cannot delete the, in, the, the instruction. That space for instructions remains like that. Because when we give a test, there are usually some instructions that we give. Um, whether it's an, an assignment, there are always instructions. So I want it to stay like that. When it comes to the questions, because you must type them yourself, there are all these words that I put uh, there showing you that when you have this space, for example, I can be able to delete that just using the backspace like that or using delete. You can see that space becomes smaller and smaller. And so is the same with the other questions. You see there is a space for the questions. By the way, I was explaining about this navigation that I have here. I've explained the importance of having a navigation and you might want to check whether the documents which you are using have navigation. And this is how you do it. You will go to view, then you will go to the group of tabs named show and check this navigation pane box. You check it. You can see mine is checked. That is why my navigation is appearing. If I uncheck, it disappears. So you may be using a document with a navigation and you're not aware. So that is how you check whether the document has a navigation or not. Good documents always have navigation, especially when the documents are very large. They always have a navigation. Even my PDF document here has a navigation and I can be able to put that navigation away if I want. All right. Uh, let me reveal the navigation and the space for the navigation you can reduce it in order to increase the amount of a screen that you are using. So when I go to question two, again there is this space. I was explaining that space and the fact that you are able to increase that space. So let me go to question one because I again I want to show you how you can set that question without so much difficulty. And I'm actually at the end of the chapter where I have questions on pressure. So this is the point at the end of the chapter where I have revision questions. And I want to use those revision questions in preparing this document. And since I don't want to type, I'll just come to the question that I'm interested in. I'm interested in this one here. Define pressure and state its SI unit. I copy everything all the way to the end and then that is control C to copy. Then I go to my word document. Remember it was question one and this way I need to paste that information. So I'm going to right click and I want to paste it as as um, text only. That, it, that is it has not been formatted. If you just go and click control V to paste, then it always chooses this by default where it keeps the source formatting. That may not be appropriate. You want to it to come in as text only so that it can adapt the formatting of your new document. So that is why choosing the paste options A is important. So the moment I choose that, you can see I have the question, define pressure and state its SI unit. You can see that over there, there is a problem with this. 
apparently because that one was a scanned document sometimes the the scanner may not recognize some letters especially if the letters are not very clear when you are scanning the document so there i meant to write s i and uh, these are uppercase so it is s i unit s i unit like that so you can see just by using copy and paste you are able to set a question very fast now let's go to the answer because you can see there is a link here where i'll want the students to click in order to check the answer so it means that when i'm preparing this document i must uh, prepare it with the answers so i will either go to this link that i've put there or i can go to the navigation pane where i enter the answer to question one so you can see there is question one here and there is the answer to question one so i can either follow this link or come to the navigation pane any one of them will get to that space where i need to write the answer to question one so for example if i click on the navigation pane it takes me answer to question one and the instructions are very clear again let me go back there so that i can follow the link again you can see for me to open that link it prompts me to press control followed by the a click there and again it takes me to the answer to question one so you can see it is a uh a smart document in the sense that uh, it gives you what you need at any one time and it shortens the time you take to set this assignment or this work for your students so again i will click over here and i, I must emphasize here you cannot delete anything which is um the only thing that i've allowed you to to do is to write the answer everything else remains like that and you cannot format it you cannot delete it for example you can't delete this question you can't delete this you can't even delete that text control it remains like that the only thing you can do is to type your answer there and the answer will be pressure is blah 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 so i will not go through that because sometimes when i, I use my keyboard and i'm recording the screen my screen recorder sometimes does not type certain letters because it is using those letters but the most important thing is for you to be able to understand what we are doing here so there are two things i can do if i want to go back to the question just to check the question i can now go back using the navigation pane over there other than that if i wanted to go to the next question i will just click here and when i do that it will take me to question two because i'm dealing with the answer to question one the next question is question two and let's see whether the the link takes me there and you can see i'm at question two again where i'm supposed to type something let us assume this time i want to draw a diagram and maybe this diagram is found in my textbook so again uh, let me see a suitable diagram that i can be able to use from my textbook and maybe it may be a diagram like this one and i want that diagram to appear in as part of my question so let me go back to the template here and question two requires that i have that diagram inside there so i can type whatever uh, stuff i have over there before the diagram you can say this diagram or this figure i can use the letters figure one enter you can see 
it gives me space. And I want to put that diagram here and then continue with the typing process in the same question. Maybe I can have A, B. So let me go back to the figure, create that space, and you can see with this template, it actually expands, giving me more space where I can be able to write my information over there. So let us enter the diagram. You will go to insert, insert tab, then on the group of tabs named illustration, go to screenshot. Click on the arrow there, and then you'll go to screen clipping. Click on it. It will open your previous page. You remember my previous page was this one. That is where I was scrolling. Make sure that before you go to the document, you have opened the page where you have the diagram. You have it there. If, for example, it is an, uh, a page that you have obtained online and maybe the diagram is online, make sure that the diagram is clearly visible and it was the only one that you have on that page. Then navigate to your document. Then follow that process. The moment you say you instructed to clip the diagram, it opens your previous page. And immediately that happens, the, uh, pre uh, the page becomes grayish like that. You can see uh, everything is not clear, but that one is the way the, that tab works. And your cursor changes from an arrow into that plus sign. So you're going to take it to the corner of that figure because that is where you start your clipping from. I just want the diagram. I don't want the borders. Just the diagram. And then you left click, hold, and drag until the whole diagram is covered. Don't release it until you have everything that you need. For example, if you release it there, it's going to cut out part of the diagram and part of the labeling. And now you're in a position to release. The moment you release, it goes right into the space where you wanted because this is where we wanted it to come. You can see there is figure one there, there is uh, part A there of the question and everything else. Let's see what happens when I click away. I click away and you can see that it's only the border lines I have, the top border and the lowest border for my questions. That is how I have designed this template. I have designed it in such that the question or the answers are enclosed by two border lines, the topmost part and the lowest part, like that. And you can see, you can be able to draw a diagram very, very fast. You can now be able to change this diagram the way you want. You can go to the, to the corners, uh, left click, drag and, and drag it like that. And you can see uh, it changes your diagram the way you actually want it to be. You can even be able to clip it further. Let's assume you wanted to do a little bit of clipping. You will go to format and then you will go to crop. Crop. In fact, cropping is the word that you, you should be using here, not clipping. So let's see. Once you click on that, the edges of the diagrams are going to change. You can see that now we have those which allow you to, the ones at the corners allow you to change this and change this simultaneously. That is what happens. You can see both of them change. Both of them, they change. All right. The ones at the end only allow you to cut it from the edge. So it is important that, you know, you decide on which one you want to use. Once you are through with the cropping process, you go back to crop and click on that icon. And you can see now it goes back to how it was before. When you are changing the size of the diagram, because sometimes the diagram can be so big and sometimes too small, you just want to make sure that it fits on that page 
make sure that you use the corner drag points. When you left click and hold and then you drag, those they simultaneously change the length and the width proportionately. Now if by by chance you get hold of these ones here and use those, they are going to distort your diagram. See that? The letters and even the way your diagram looks like it appears distorted completely. So it is important that when you are using those, let me just undo what I'm doing. When you are changing the size of the diagram, you, you use the corners here. You use those corners. They change the diagram proportionately. At the same time, uh, this time now I can be able to put the diagram now at the center of my uh, canvas. Let me see whether if I use that, it can bring it to the center. And I can be able now to type, either to type the question here, the figure one shows this kind of diagram, and then I ask the students A. I continue typing the question and then the answer remember the answer must be given for every question when you are done when you're finished with that now your template is ready to be transmitted to your student or to be taken to your student you can post it to your student using email you can go to the to your to the student's email address select them and then you go and send that particular document to the students. But when you are sending it, you want to make sure that they cannot be able to edit that. So you will not be, you will not send it as a word program. When you downloaded this template, I allowed you to have it as a word program because I wanted you to, to be able to edit. That is why in your when you download it it is already um, a word program and it allows you to use Microsoft PowerPoint to edit the same but for your students you might not want them to edit that so you're going to save this as a PDF and here I'm going to show you how you convert a word document into a PDF it's actually very simple you will go to file then save as then this dialog box opens you can change the title of your document here uh, for me I just want to leave it as it is then come to the type of file you want click on it you can see again it gives you a drop-down menu of the types of files which are possible to create using Microsoft Word. Then you will search for PDF. If you come down here, you will be able to see PDF here. That is what you are going to click. Now, on the other hand, because you, you want, when this PDF reaches your students, they will be able to use the, the navigations. They will be able to use the, the links properly. It's important you come to options here. And then you check headings. Create bookmarks using headings. Make sure that it is checked. And then you say OK. And then you come here. You say save. It's saving. And it has already saved. And you can see the same document now is a PDF. And I've used in my PDF reader now to open that document. This is now what you will send to your students. Because it is not editable but you are, they are able to navigate from one question to the next. Of course, with the instructions, your students, you will have instructed your students on how to use the navigation pane. And again here, I want to take time to, to go through the process of finding out if your PDF document has a navigation pane. On the very left hand side here, you will see these icons here. Look for this icon here because this icon shows that there are bookmarks in this document. If that icon is missing, then there will be issues with it. 
the document does not have bookmarks. Good PDF documents always have bookmarks which work as navigation. So click on it and you can see it shows me the navigation which, is, which exists here. Change the size of the navigation because you want the navigation to be uh, to occupy a small narrow column while your major document occupies a big column. All right, you come to this arrow here. I've designed it in such a way that now the questions are visible. They are visible here. The answers are also visible, but uh, it may not be necessary for your students to use the navigation pane if the document has these links it may not be necessary but all the same they can use it they can go to the question read the question and then check the answer for that question read the question check the answer for that question now if the navigation pane is not working or in one way or another the student does not want to use the navigation pane uh, I want to go to the uh, topmost page where I have the first question. So let me drag the scroll bar like that. I have now that first question. Define pressure and state it as a unit. You have instructed the students to always check the answer after they have written down their own answers in the book. Of course, there is no way of checking it this if the students are at a remote point. But if you have good students have you, and you've given them proper instructions, they will be able to follow that. So they will click here to check the answer. So they will go directly to where the answer is and you will have written the answer for them here. Now they can be able to mark their work using the answers that you've given them. And then they can go to the next question just by clicking this. And you can see just by clicking that it takes them to the next question. And you remember this is the question that you were dealing with because I was showing you how to draw that particular diagram. And you can see this document can be very useful to a student who is making some maybe last minute revision and really doesn't have time to scroll through massive textbooks and uh, so forth. The time is very short. These are some of the documents you can prepare for them. You're not giving away the answers, but you are prompting them to attempt the question first and then write down the answer. Now, I want to go to another skill that you can be able to use when you want to draw your own diagrams. Let's say, for example, you want to, you are in geography and you want to draw a map for example i had already opened a tab here that shows the map of uh, i think it is a picture that shows the map of kenya i had i obtained these uh, from just online and maybe you want to draw this map in your book because you, in one way or another, you might not want so much information which is there. You just want the borderline. This is what you will do. Once it is opened like that, you'll go to our document. Let me now put that one away because I actually don't need that. What I need is our document here. So I want to edit question three over there. That's the question which... I want to edit oh this one is a pdf pdfs don't work with editing for now it is the word document that i actually want and i want to edit question three and i want to draw them up so i can write this map of our country kenya enter and there is a space there where I can start drawing this map. Now this is what I will do. I'll go to insert the group of tab named illustrations. Click on shapes. This arrow here for shapes. 
Now on the drop down menu, you'll come all the way to the end, insert new drawing canvas over there. And now this is what we are going to do our drawing. Now on that canvas, I can make it to be as large as possible if I want. Maybe that space will be enough. I'll go back to insert again and this time insert picture. And that picture that I want to insert is uh, what I had already uh, drawn or downloaded. So I'll go to downloads because I'm sure I that is where I have it in the downloads. So you must know exactly where you've put your files so that you are able to quickly navigate to them. So you need to know at what point in your computer or in what drive you have your files. Because again, when you have your files all over your computer, your computer becomes uh, a device that uh, brings in more confusion in instead of bringing order. You must know exactly where you have filed your documents that you are using from time to time. It is very important. And if, if you have a problem uh, with that, or you would like to know how to organize your work, I already have a video which I call Professional Organization Map. It is a map that shows you how to organize your work in your computer. And you can go to that video. I've put it up there. Go to that video, play it from beginning to end and follow exactly the steps I've given so that you can know how to organize your work so that you can know how to locate what you need when you need it. So for me, we can see I've been able to locate that map because it is in my downloads. So I'm just going to insert it there. So it's a very small map. So I'm going to drag the corners like I've shown you how to do. You drag and be careful about the spacing. Uh, you can see when I'm dragging and the space is not enough, the shape starts to change differently. So you have to be a bit careful. So let me take to the corner there, drag in order to fill as much of that space as possible. Let me increase the space at the bottom here and I can put away that ribbon so that I have more space for the sake of this video and maybe let's assume that is the map which I want to draw. I will go back to insert shapes, click on it and on the first um, a group of shapes I will go to this one here written free form, free form, click on it and then it will change into a plus sign. And then now I'll come to my map. I'm going to start from this corner. I want to draw the outline and then start clicking, left clicking. Each and every time I come to a point that uh, looks as if they are, it's a curve, I've got to click along that curve like that. So I'm going to quickly go through this. I know with the uh, time you can be able to do it accurately. Uh, but for me, I will quickly go through the major corners. It might not be as smooth as uh, you might want it to be, but you can always change that later on. Remember, I'm clicking um, what you call left clicking of the mouse as I move along like that. Very easy. And here I've got to be careful so that it does not come to a close. Got to be very careful so that I don't click on the previous line because if you click, it stops and it gives you the shape that you have at that particular moment. So I'm always, I'm almost coming to the point where I started from. Continue clicking like that. It's a process that requires patient. And this is where I started from. So immediately I click. Notice what happens. And the whole map now comes 
into play. I can now, because it is the borderline that I wanted for that particular map, I can go here, change the fill in color. You can see, I can change the fill in color, change it to a good green color, jungle green, like that. Very nice, green color. Now, I want it to be transparent because I might want to put the counties there. I might want the students to be able to name the various counties. Let's see how I can be able to do that. And in conjunction with the PowerPoint, I'm able to, to add in a bit of a simulation. Of course, this video is going beyond what I had planned it uh, to do. So fill in shape. A fill in color, I remove in the fill in color, but the boundary is still there. So I'm going to make the boundary uh, to be a little bit bold. So I come to the weight of the line that I'm using. I notice that over here, I can be able to change the weighting of that particular line. Maybe it's not very visible because of the color. So let me see whether I can be able to change its color. So you can see it's got the blue color. And if I want to insert the counties, I will go through the same process. Go to shapes, freeform, and then let me go to this county. I think it is uh, one of the counties there at the corner. So I'm going to trace it very, very well. Very, very well like that. So that it fits exactly in its place and you can see that county has just come in i'm going to leave it with that color as i go to the next county and remember you can uh, continue with this process patiently until you come to the end of all the counties so you need the previous county the boundaries of the previous county so that they are going to merge with each other very well without interfering with the border of any other county. Again, I'll move a little bit faster here because all I want you to get is the concept. And you can see that, that now for geography teachers, you've actually got no reason. Now, where did I start? Did I start from here? I can't remember where I started from because you can see it's gone beyond the, the particular point where I actually started from. And it is like, it continues on and on. Okay, let me stop at that point and see whether it will bring in that it doesn't. So I delete that particular section. I want to repeat that because I want it to be as clear as possible. So. Let me be clear. I'm starting from that point. Come to this point very quickly. And I was saying for geography uh, teachers, you can see this skill can be very handy. When you want to draw a diagram, you can use the, some of those tools over there to do this. And now I come to the end here and there I have the next county. So I can change its color the way I want. Uh, fill in color, I can have, let me say, that light green color, something like that. Now let's see when I remove the picture, because there is a picture which I'm, I'm actually copying this. If I remove it, let's see what happens. Uh, I have this previous picture over here. Let me see. Move it aside. See what happens. I can even delete it completely. I can delete it completely and I have a beautiful map of our country. Okay, the corners here, they are not merging very, very well, but I'm sure with just a little bit of adjustments and all that, they can be able to merge. Yeah. And besides, you can always right click on that figure 
then come to edit points click on that and you can see those edit points there you can start dragging them to the particular point where you want the border to be you can see that that skill i've again talked about edit points how to use edit points in order to change an already existing shape so that is what you do for geography teachers welcome aboard and that one is a big a plus on your side you will be able to draw maps very very fast and uh, use them in your questions and so forth all you need to do is just a shape that you want to trace it's like a tracing paper and now you can do anything you want with this map you can fill it with a different color you can change the borders the way you want you can change the size you can even have all this as one diagram because the counties and the map of kenya they are separate you can group the, them together so that they act like one figure you will go to format first of all you will select you will put your cursor there left click and drag so that it covers the whole of that when you release you will find that each one of the diagrams that you have drawn is selected separately after that you will go to format then in format you will go to group click on that and then you will say group and now you can see all the separate diagrams have disappeared and is ju just now one diagram and using that you can now use these corner arrows here to drag and change the size you can see that you can make it a small diagram or a big diagram now if you go to PowerPoint now, you can be able to, okay, first of all, you can group and then transport it as one diagram, or you can even ungroup. You can see that if you uh, right click anywhere, it gives you the option. I click on the diagram. I come to one of the corners here, right, uh, left click. You can see grouping. When I go to grouping, I can ungroup so that there again, separate diagrams all together and you can be able to see i can be able to move this one away so that i have a blank there so you can run this as a powerpoint simulation where now you simulate the motion of these counties as you ask the student to name those counties as we have them like that and this is what you can be able to do with this document that I'm availing free for you. Make sure you go to the download and I have it freely available for those who have activated their emails with the TSC. If you go there and you're using Teams, make sure you go to my team, which is ICT for Teachers. Once you get there, and let me see whether it is open so that I can just show you what you are required to do. So let me put my icons back because you can see on my desktop, I don't have any icons. So how do I do that? Right click view. When I'm on view, I navigate to the right where I've got show desktop icons. I click on that and my desktop icons come back. So let me put away these files that I'm working on so that I can show you the icon for Teams Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. It's right here. I double click on it and it's going to open. Once it opens, you navigate to that team. And uh, there are two email addresses here that I use. There is my regular email address and there is the one the TSC has given every teacher for activation. For you to be able to use that, you need to activate your email. That is what I'm talking about, activation of the email. Once the email is activated, you'll be able to use it now with Microsoft Teams. This Microsoft Teams is an application that, that gives us fantastic opportunities to teach our students from a remote point 
to hold meetings and and so many other advantages so go right ahead if you've not activated your email address do that so that you can be able to use this now i'm going to use my activated email to get into the teacher service commission so i click on that and wait for it to open once it opens it will give us the teams which the various teachers have already created within because teachers have already moved into it uh, on mass very many of them they have moved over there and they have created the teams so the very first time you open it it by default it goes to teams and shows you the teams which are already available ICT for teachers is already one of them so I created this team and it has got very many teachers inside there I want to be one of them and if you're already one of them go into teams click on that and by the way for you to join a team you just need to click here and choose any one of the teams that you want to join so let's assume you have already joined so I click on ICT for teachers over there and it's going to open once it opens maybe I can use a bigger screen over here let me increase the size of this window so that we can be able to see more information from it and at this point I can see that my desktop is cluttered with a lot of information and I want to put away these desktop icons I follow the same process right click view desktop icons put them away and they go because I want a neat uh, desktop so that when I explain something to you you are not distracted by anything and this one is a good skill for you to copy if you're teaching your students online you don't want to distract them with anything else distraction happens like this maybe you are on a whiteboard in a real classroom situation and you are teaching maybe geography but on the walls we've got charts for other subjects what happens is that instead of the student looking at what you're demonstrating on the whiteboard or illustrating on the whiteboard they with the moment they look at you they have a chance of seeing other charts just next there so you might want to put these charts at the back of the classroom so that since they are facing in front anytime they look at the front part they look at the charts that you've put for your subject when it is time for another subject you move your charts to the back because they can act as distractors so i do not want to distract you that is why i've removed those icons but i had put them there for a, a reason by default you'll be taken to the general tab in this general tab there is a lot of communication between me and uh, other teams so that is where that communication comes in i want you to go to teacher ict infrastructure that one is a channel that i've created within ict for teachers you click on that and you will find my posts the latest posts is where i've put links to massive amount of training I have got over 70 video lectures training you on how to do stuff as you teach how to use ICT to teach so take advantage of that these links will go will take you direct to what you want to learn for example if you want to how to know how to make simulations using Microsoft PowerPoint just a click on this and takes you direct to that particular link and this is what happens I've just clicked it and you can see it takes me to that particular training direct it's a video and because it's a video now that we have drawn and uh, format let me just pause it it's a video it's a very short video just 10 minutes and you actually learn how to make simulations using microsoft powerpoint over there i've gone through the process of drawing drawing this diagram using microsoft uh, word and I've shown you part of it now how do you get to format it and until it looks like this I've explained it in that 
particular video. Let me put that one away because the function of this or the main reason why I'm on this video is to let you know there are so many other trainings that you can be able to get from me. And I've given you links there. And the good thing is that you just need to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I upload new content. And I put the link for you at any one time you can come here and get the link. Apparently, these links are found within Microsoft Teams because that is where I have a platform to be able to communicate with you as far as use of ICT in teaching is concerned. So if you have not activated your email, you're missing a lot and if you have activated it and you're not making use of it again you're losing a lot activate it and start using it and one of the ways you can start using it is by downloading microsoft teams into your computer or mobile phone and you have access to this information so i was on this channel you go to that channel you click on that if you want now to download that template, just go to the files over there and you'll find files that I have uploaded. Apparently, by the time of recording this video, because I was just using that particular template, I've not uploaded it yet because I've just created it. So by the time you watch this video, I will have uploaded it there and you will be able to see it there as a template for designing uh, tests, assignments, and so forth. So, but meanwhile, there are other downloads you can be able to find there. Like for example, this blue board with the grid, what is it? If you click on it, it just opens. And uh, this one is something that you, you may be using with, um, with your students. Maybe when you are teaching your students online, it's a PowerPoint a board that I've designed with a blue background and then I put a grid and then I've drawn a neat Cartesian plane there. Let's say I want to run a slideshow. So I will go to this present button or tab there, click on it and there it is. Maybe let's say I'm doing a presentation, an online presentation to my students. There I have that neat grid and uh, this one may be very useful to mathematics teachers as a mathematics teacher i'll get my graphics tablet graphics tablet very important i'll be talking about it in fact i've already talked about it in, in some of those videos you can go through that and see how you use the graphics tablet a graphics tablet enables me to ink my desktop in real time like you can see it comes with a digital pen so and you can see now the cursor turns into an arrow over there so i'm no longer using this my mouse i'm using now the digital pen so when i go here i will just hover the pen over the powerpoint presentation and there is that icon for the pen i click on it choose a color and now i am I'm free now to start writing anything over here. Maths. Maybe I'm dealing with uh, y as a function of x. You know, something like that. Uh, on this particular grid, I, I plot a point, maybe 3, 1. That point will be somewhere here. I draw a vector. Maybe let's say I'm talking about uh, position vectors. That is what I can be able to do. In the same... Uh, presentation or in the same files I've given you uh, boards I've given you a download a blue board without a grid and you can be able to use that I'll be able to talk about I'll be talking about much about this in different videos but for now I was just talking about how to use the smart document to design an assignment for your students who are at a remote point but let us assume your students are you're teaching your students in real time in a real classroom and you still want to use the smart document it can be used 
you can use this together with a projector in a situation whereby you display these questions on a screen for your students using a laptop and a projector and as the students solve the questions within a click of a button you can show them how the answers look like you can even design detailed answers how they get to the answers you can be able to do that in a really classroom situation and even it can come in handy in a situation whereby you are engaged uh, with something else and you want a teacher to stand in for you what do you do you leave some work behind and that teacher is able to conduct the lesson for you what are some of the things that you might want to leave behind it's an assignment in form of a smart document smart document are very useful because they don't tire the student when the student wants the question the questions is there when the student wants the answers the answers are there so take your time activate your email go to my team and I welcome you to my team it's already got about 60 teachers who are actively using this content come to my team download the kind of stuff I have because very soon I'm going to be conducting uh, online meetings with my team members just to hear from them how they are using these materials and what kind of difficulties they, they are having I'll be having a real-time meeting and if you want to get notified make sure that you have activated your email and you are already a member of my team otherwise let me stop this video i never intended it to be uh, this long because of time i will catch you with another video next time when i come up with something on use of ict in the teaching process bye bye